Good afternoon and welcome to the last concurrent session of the day, Lights, Camera, Classroom. Take your content to center stage. Our presenters today are Matt Anderson and Dennis Johnson, faculty members at Fayetteville Technical Community College. If you have any questions for the presenters during the session, please feel free to enter those into the Q&A section at the bottom of the Zoom Room screen and we will address them at the end of the talk. And on that note, I will hand it over to our presenters. Good afternoon. Hello. So welcome to our little meeting here, our webinar on action lights, camera, and action classroom. And we're just setting up so that you can see our little PowerPoint here. How's that? Is it so is it showing? Do you see the PowerPoint or do you just see the slides? We see the slides. You see each slide or just the one slide? Yeah, we still need to click to um, make a presentation. Okay. How about now? How's that look? That looks good. Well, it's hey. given a moment. It's still a black screen. Uh oh, okay. Still black? Still black screen. Well, then let's you share. This yeah. Let's do this. How about now? That's good. Yay. Good is good. All right. Lights, camera, classroom. So this is, you know, and the way that we set this up is almost too easy. And we wanted to go with how did this all begin? Um, one of the things I would actually think about is generally speaking and we know this um when we teach we teach on our own in a vacuum almost like we are uh uh sole business owners and even though we're in these institutes of learning with a whole bunch of other faculty and administrators and instructional designers around us at the end of the day we typically walk into our classroom alone leave our classroom do our professional development alone Best case scenario is you have somebody in the same discipline that can join in once in a while. Yeah, exactly. Right. So we'll have meetings in this case for me, like psychology department meetings or dentists with theater department meetings. So then even then it's a little bit insular. How do you get out of that when schedules typically aren't aligned? Um, there's not a lot that you can do about it. And this is where we'll talk to you about the journey of how this began, and then we'll talk to you about what some of the things were that actually happened. So it began by us just socializing, us talking. So, hey, Matt, I'm standing outside his office. Hey, how's everything going? What's going on? And then we ended up talking about how everybody teaches in a vacuum. I don't know how it came across, but we just started talking about it. Yeah, and I don't, you know, it's funny, I don't actually remember. And even if you're, we're trying to model this in this presentation, right? There's two of us here. We could be logged in differently, but we're kind of sharing a camera. I don't know if you can see us as we're on here, the camera, you're just seeing the slides. But, right, our joke was like, let's go in and do where we've got two people on the same presentation. Um, somehow there was a discussion about an idea that sounded funny with a classroom. It might even been like, oh, did you hear what a student did or yeah. something along that? It's like, wouldn't it be cool if, and so I kind of like to call this slide or think about it as like two instructors with ideas um, to make the classroom better. So we decided to share our ideas. And the thing is, we don't ever meet together, um, right? You've got your department Correct. meetings. I've got mine. We're the same, what we'd call division. But Which we, has over 60 people, so. Yeah, and whenever we have those meetings, right, they're, you don't get to socialize a whole lot during yeah. that. Um, and so something came up in psychology where I was talking about I think, personality. I don't know if we even got there yet. Like, I was No, just, we hadn't gotten there yet. I know what it was. You said theater is basically psychology. We do a lot of psychology. We don't, we don't use the psychological terminology, but we do a lot of psychology in theater. So acting is all about psychological things. Yeah, and I said, that's neat. Um, and there was even a conversation where you talked about how people did emotions right. and how actors, 
Um, matter of fact, I'll let you do that a little bit. Maybe share some of those things. With so you. as an actor, one of our primary jobs is to portray other people. How we do that is by coming up with the characteristics of these people. If it's based on a real person, then we study the real person. If it's based on a certain type of person, then we study those type of people. But everything in theater, when you're dealing with a script, it all has to do with getting emotions out and presenting those emotions. And so as we were talking, we talk about presenting emotions and how the actor has to get into it. And then one of the troubles that some actors have, Heath Ledger, for example, they can't sometimes pull themselves back out of that character and out of those emotions too easily. And then sometimes it creates psychological problems for them. And boom, here I am teaching psychology and going, man, that's interesting. Um, yeah. How does that work? What does that go? Even though they're not using the terminology, I go, I would love to bring that into my classroom because I know that'll make the material alive when we're talking about things like motivation, personality, right? Emotions, states of being, right? All the stuff that sometimes can be text heavy and we'll do activities, but this came to a real life application. And once all this, once that came in, we're like, you want to do something together? Yeah. When's, when's your class? Oh, we have one class that overlapped. And we're like, let's Perfect. do it. Let's do it. Um, so we picked a date and did it. And we forced ourselves. So when you're going through and saying, okay, you know, and we'll talk a little bit about this more um, in a few slides later. But when you're trying to find a way to do this and bring in other material and other classes that typically wouldn't be in your classroom and can overlap, and we're going to ask you about this also in a second. One of the biggest keys is we said, pick a date. When we picked a date, we had to do it. Um, right. And that is how it all began. That's, all, that's how it began. That simple. So, and then we also had a couple of things to look at. One, did we just want me coming into his class and doing this with his students? Or did we want to include my students into his students? And ideally, we want my students to interact with his students at the same time. Now, again, if your classes don't align that way, then it's easy for me to come into at a different time if I don't have a class to come into one of his classes. And we've done that with some of the other psychology teachers. But ideally, if we can get both classes involved, then my students get to hear a lot about psychology, which they're kind of studying in a roundabout way anyway. And then the psychology students get to see what they're learning come to life. Yeah, and I would add on to that. Um, one of our big foundations or one of the things that we wanted to make sure was covered is that everyone benefited. Yes. So if we bring in these students, how are we making sure that this is enhancing the learning and not just something fun? And this is a scenario that we kind of want you to run through. And we're going to pause for a second or two, um, whether you're active right now or you're going to be watching this, um, you know, in video and as a recording, to think about these ideas on your own terms and at your own schools. Um, and then also who's around you. Like, for example, we have a theater department. Um, and psychology is also taught there, right? But there's a whole lot of other disciplines. So for this one, um, you want to read the first scenario part to give them? If you would team up with another class, what class would fit best? So if you know that you cover certain topics and you think that there may be another area on campus that maybe covers something similar, or what we've discovered is, as we were talking, there's certain things that we talk about we do uh, character analysis. Well, they're doing analyzing and analyzing um, psychological, different types of psychological yeah. emotions or whatever. So that's, that's basically what we're doing with character analysis. Um, motivation is a major thing for actors. Motivation and psychology is a big thing too. So we found out that there's certain terms that overlap that we weren't even necessarily aware of to a big degree or not. So that's that's the kind of thing. What other areas on campus, where on your campus, would fit in well? And then the other one is, well, before we even go there, um, and we'll we'll run you through this. So I guess if you're in here, right, type them. 
and then I'll, we'll kind of come back and review them with you. Right. But right again, if you're going to be visiting this when that's uh, recorded, we'll go run through ourselves. Like so, for example, you know what would fit best. My answer now is theater. God. Yeah. If I ever go anywhere else, I'm like, I need to find a place as a theater department. Um, or he's going to take me with him. Yeah. There we go. But it's just it's theater, theater. But interestingly enough, if I hadn't been asked this question, I just I never. Never would have thought of it. No, like, and I've been at other institutions and, and taught, and they have theater. It's very common that theater departments are there. Um, it, it didn't come to the top of the, my mind at all. Like, I would have pictured maybe with psychology, um, sociology might work out really well. Um, what's another one that would go in off topics? Maybe an English class would go if we're doing some kind of writing. Um, well, as we kind of talked and we found out about motivation and character analysis and all that kind of stuff, we discovered interpersonal communications does a lot of the same content. Criminal justice does a lot of the same content. So there's there are other areas on campus that really cover the same stuff, maybe from a different angle. They're looking at it slightly different from their type of what they need to know about it. So right. And you know. Now, my answer, though, and I just think for anybody that's listening, if you have a theater department in there, hopefully after this will help you uh, seek them out. Like they're there to act. Um, there are significant benefits for them. And again, we'll talk about that later. Um, but huge asset. That's a win win. And then on the other side of it. So, right. What are the easy ones? Like if you were to say, if I were to partner up with another class or they had to pair me with a class, they'll do this in learning communities sometimes or interdisciplinary learning. But we're talking kind of like one shot deals, um, maybe that you continue on, but don't have to. Um, you know, who would come to the top of your mind? And then on the other hand. Which class do you think would not work well in this scenario? And I, Take a second. We'll pause for like 10 seconds here so you can kind of type them out again. Or if you're doing this on your own, then you can think about it for a second and then we'll run through a few. Right. And then we'll want to know why you chose math. <laughs> we're kidding. Math's a good thing. No, but it's true. It is true. But math is one of those that most of us look like, oh, what can we do with those? Well, for theater, I could do math because there are some plays that deal with math. A Beautiful Mind, the movie A Beautiful Mind. There's a Pulitzer Prize winning play called Proof. It's all about a math ma who's majored in math. So I love that you pick math, by the way. I do. Because we know everyone's thinking that. Yeah. And again, then there becomes the problem. Um, because one of the real benefits of doing this is students and instructors or anyone is able to see we're getting out of the vacuum. No learning happens in a vacuum um now, if you teach science like chemistry and stuff you probably don't want to bring the theater students in there to, no. to make it they, come alive they could definitely make there's it gonna be some alive. explosions there's gonna be no i'm kidding but right the thing is if we teach all the time as if a subject doesn't connect to other things then it won't connect it won't right and there's going to be limited learning and unless someone generally loves this we're almost asking the students to make the connections for themselves um one of my favorite examples of this one that I, I like to do a lot of times after doing this and talking to other faculty about it is I'm like, look at picture this chair, right? Just a chair. And I'm like, tell me about the chair. But then I pick a topic about the chair, right? Tell me about the chair as if you're an English major. An English person is going to talk about the chair. You know, maybe they'll say, oh, it's how someone writes in it, or it's how someone, you know, might want to describe something. Now tell me about the chair from a science perspective. They might talk about the chemicals that mm -hmm. are in it that are needed to be done or the process to make it. Um, tell me about it from a math perspective, right? So now you're starting to get to see how an object or anything in is touched by almost every subject that's out there, right? I could even put in like a social studies, a history if we wanted to. I might talk to you about how a chair came to be um, or how we see chairs as being like design, like what's the difference between a throne um or you know a school chair like why are some seen as more prestigious now all of a sudden it starts to help 
make it a little bit more clear about why different subjects relate to everything. And so that's kind of why we put in, what do you think would not work well? The answer is there are other ways that they can work well, but we're just not used to seeing them. Or it may take you a little longer to discover how they connect. Yeah. And so, you know, if you were to do something like this, or I guess probably what our first suggestion would be find one that seems easiest. Right. And then challenge yourself because math, for example, um, at least like say of psychology, you know, I could easily go into statistics and how they are used to manipulate ideas, um, right? People will disproportionately emphasize different numbers um, to make it look like there's been a big gain or loss. Um, right. We see this happening all the time in the media. You could also look at it from the aspect of these students in this math class are going through all different psychological things. Some are anxious, some are going to have test anxiety, some of them are, can whiz right through it or think they can. So there's a lot of different things psychologically going on in their minds too. Yeah, there was, matter of fact, with that topic, right, we we're talking about like, how do you prepare for a test well, right? And there are things you can do to put you in the zone, um, even if you're tired or not, like it will tease and say, you know, is there a, in psychology, you know, is there a pill that can make you smarter? Um, and the answer is yes, depending how you define smart, right? Like one of it's caffeine, it'll make right. you more alert. And so, you know, for some students, you know, if you're feeling a little drowsy and you need to have a little bit more attention and ability to recall information, um, that might be a tactic that could work, right? But these things can kind of mesh in and you can figure out how to do, you know, a fun lesson that helps to bring it alive. Yeah. So there's our scenarios for you uh, to try at home and to play along with. Now we come to act one, the brainstorming coming up with topics from one class or the other. So for us, what we did was we we just briefly discussed things and I was like, all right, if we're going to really do this, give me five topics that you teach in psychology. Right. Um, because really at the end of the day, Dennis doesn't know exactly what I teach and I don't know what he teaches, even though we all have a curriculum, right? And we have guides that we're following and content that we have to do. We know it, but we don't know each other's right so right our brainstorming became where it's like all right what are the things you're teaching give me three or five of them. and and with those five things that you're teaching what is it you want the students to come out of there with so if, give me five topics three to five topics and then subtopics underneath it that you want them to remember for either for a test or whatever it is that yep, you're yep. using it for um because those are the things that i'm going to set in when i create these assignment or these scenes or whatever we're doing, I'm going to use that content that you give me to make sure that this is what's coming out of it. Yeah. And I think that's what made it easy, right? Yeah. We just said five topics. And then from there, what are you doing with it? And for us, we kind of, when we talked about it earlier, right, when he mentioned having to get into emotions and learning how to project emotions, portray emotions, I guess, maybe is mm -hmm. that a better way. Um, I was like, oh, emotion. I cover emotion. And so we had one. Um, and then we went and I like, what else do you cover? And then I went right to my, uh, you know, syllabus and looked at what the topics were. We talked about it. So I've got personality coming up. Yeah. Oh, we're, we're all about personality. That's what actors do. So, right. And so we had to go, we were looking at the big five, which have five different traits of personality. That was one of the things that they were going to learn about. Um, here's a chance we go, this could fit. Right. And so as part of the planning, getting that content to work and narrowing it down, so what I did was when we decided we were going to do personality, I went back into my class. So my class, it actually is longer than his. So mine's uh, it five, con it's, it's technically five contact hours, okay. whereas his is whatever. Three. We have three. We had one hour that overlapped. So And only one. And only one, yeah. So on the days that we weren't going to do this, so my, my class on Friday, so what we did was we watched some videos that covered these five psychological personality traits that were pretty good videos that we saw. And so basically we watched so that we would have a good understanding, not just me, but my students would have some kind of understanding of what it is we're trying to portray, which for us is great because that's what we teach them anyways. You got to portray this emotion. How do you come about it? So we always talk about Stanislavski 
and how Stanislavski had two, two basic ways of doing it. You had the internal and the external. So internal, you internalize it. You think about memories. So if you're playing somebody who some had a death in their family, and so they're they're going through that grief and sorrow, then you think about somebody who actually died or a pet or whatever it is that can get those emotions out. The other thing is external, where you have outside sim stimuli that would basically get you jump started and get that motion going. Sometimes it's a prop, sometimes it's another character or whatever it is. So um, putting tears and teardrops in your eyes or doing something to make your eyes water so that they'll cry. Most people can cry on cue if they really think about it hard enough. So, And see, and I loved it on my end for my students. What do we do to prepare for it? Nothing. Nothing. Because their next topic of when it was coming up was personality. I didn't have to give them anything extra. But the neat thing is, right, you would have covered that material. We would have covered it. We just would not have sat down and watched the videos. But now I'll, I'll send down every time we do the class, I'll watch the videos. For yeah. Them. And for his students, that was fits with their curriculum of how do I get in preparation for the role? Right. And now they actually had an audience now right. set up, which was we were now going to say, OK, we're going to meet. This is the class that it goes um, and we combined them. And we decided, where were I here? Planning. We're, we're now to run with it. Did we, did we get to run with it? What content works? Yeah. We narrowed down what to fit. Um, and I guess maybe I might add just a little bit more of planning. We came up with, well, then I guess let's run with it, right? Is that let's running? run with it. We're running with we're it. We're running with it. We're going. Is okay, now what's this going to look like? And so what we decided classroom? was we wanted to do some scenes, some acting scenes. But we didn't necessarily want them to have to memorize a bunch of stuff, especially when they're not used to it. So I have some scenes called elliptical scenes or open scenes, which is basically about 12 lines of dialogue is, hello, hi, how are you? I'm good. What did you do last night? I don't know. I didn't do much of anything. What did you do? That kind of thing, just generic little dialogue. And so we, I pulled five or six of these. We came, met as a class, and then we took one of my students and paired with one of Matt's students, so an actor and a psychology student, came up. And basically, I gave them a scene. So I said, this is what we're going to do. This is the scene we're going to run. And, and I think at one point, we even let them choose what this, where they were at, what was going yeah. on. So we basically are saying, where is this taking place? And what are these two characters' basics? Are they their students waiting in a, outside for a registration? And one of them's ticked off, the other's not, or whatever. So whatever the scene is. So we gave them basic. And then we just said, do it. No other inst instructions or anything, just read it and do it. And so they do it. And then we'd stop. And then I would give them my directing techniques where I would say, all right, so what you need to do is give a little bit more of this. If your character is supposed to be angry, we want to see that anger build. We don't want to see it just boom right there. We want to see it build up and then peak off. And then you, you got to either work with it or try to get them to calm down or whatever it is. So let's do it again with some of that in thought. And then they do it again. And then maybe I do it one more time. But this time I gave them one of those personality characteristics, one of the five traits. I said, you're going to do this. And so what we did was we broke them down to minor, regular, and heavy duty, basically. It's not the words we use, but so we had, if you're looking at ocean as one of the types, then it was there's you can basically say there's those who are have very little um, of this emotion that shows actively. Then there's the moderate side, and then there's those who are way off, more on the deep end, I guess you could say. And then each one of those traits had a. So I, we basically I said this is what your trait is, and then they acted out again. Hopefully, showing that trait. I might have done it one more time to say give us a little bit more of that, and they do it again. Then we basically add everybody else in the class, my students and his students, pair off into little groups, and then they had to come up with what trait did they portray and explain why they did it. Right. Why um, they chose that trait. And so for mine, right, they very much became evaluators and going, what trait did we see, right? They were trying to analyze um, and apply the content that they had learned, right? So we... We had already went through that before. So 
just getting on the phone, of course, during the presentation. Exactly. But uh, right, they're in it and they're now taking the material, getting to see an action in these scenarios, which were really cool to watch, and then discuss. And not everyone agreed. Some thought it was this trait, um, you know, conscientiousness, and some thought maybe it was agreeableness. And the classroom became so alive. Um, but, but because they had to guess why they they had to tell us why they chose that, we found out some of what they chose, part of it is because some of these overlap, some of the characteristics overlap. Yeah. The other is they were putting subcontext in there, yeah. some subtext in there that maybe in fact, one group, if I remember right, they came up with this big backstory yeah. for these characters that had no backstory at all. They came up with it. And so now we got to talk to them about subtext yeah i mean i'd almost put that it became like a live theater for them it did and you know one of the things that i'd point out especially like for non-theater people that are on here could i have done this in the class without the theater students yes and no yes i could have them role play as we do but the thing that really clicked and ignited it is normally they're not that good at it right some don't have any interest or any experience. There might be a few students that would, but not really. Where here, I brought in a whole classroom of them who don't mind public speaking, want to do it, want to hone their skills, are practicing and improving as it's going on. And need an audience. And and need an audience, and right, have an audience that they don't know. And it just livened everything up. Um, one of the things I was looking on our phone, though, is we're going, when do we end at 30 after? Are we almost done? We, we get a couple minutes. I think. Okay. So, we're going to, I'm going to, so right, this is what run with it looked like on, um, right, I'm just going to skip over, like. And we reviewed afterwards, we talked about what worked, what couldn't work, what could be tweaked. Right, and it wasn't a lot, like there was a no. lot that was really well, but what we really want to be able to hit on is to show you that after we did it and talked about it, others started liking it. So I, I spent time in other psychology classes with other instructors. So one of the things we did was personality, which we did with Matt. Well, and then with another instructor, we did customer service motivation. You got requests. We did. Which I hated because all of a sudden my source so now is getting, I'm like, Dennis, can yeah. we go do something? He's like, well, I'm booked with this. other. And, and I only have so many times. <laughs> but right. You can share how all of a sudden right. everyone else started liking And then, then we did sensation perception. We did something with memory. We actually went in, the instructor went into the class, set her purse down at the computer. And then I went in and asked her to come out and talk so I could talk to her in the hallway. So we talked while we were doing that. Some two of my students came in and actually walked into the classroom, not saying a word to anybody, grabbed her purse and walked out. And then when she came back in, she's like, where's my purse? And we went through this whole scenario of trying to find a purse, act like we called security, all this stuff. And then we asked the students questions. What, what did these people look like? What were they wearing? And so we went through and wrote all this stuff down and they were all over the place it was awesome it was crazy because they none of them none of them and we even brought them in to say are these the people and they were like no that they don't look quite right there was something wrong about it but, and you know and there's one thing again we can show videos of that right and they do have them it's just not the same not the it, same it'll work if you've got nothing else but if you can partner up and again it doesn't take much time something like that could be planned in half an hour or oh, yeah. less yeah. Um, your sensation and perception that they did, like just an example um, for people that are covering this material is like, um, right, multiple senses. One of them was feeling other people around you. So we'd have people. So we put them in a blindfold over them, basically. Or, and then we'd move around. And can you can you sense somebody being around you? Because, you know, if you're late at night, it's dark, power's out. You can't see anything, but you hear a sound, and now you think there's things going on. And, and allowed to look at different senses when you've removed one of them, typically a primary one. Um, we threw one here on the bottom that has a mock trial, which is uh, psychology isn't actually involved with, but I'm jealous of they, it. But it, they did they did come in to involved. watch it. Did they? They came in. So I, we did a mock trial with the criminal justice program. And uh, Lee's class came okay. in and, and got to watch what was going on. See, that's the problem. Other people are now starting yes. to use this. It's becoming demand, right? But again, it's a neat idea of the acting students worked with criminal justice to do a mock trial. And then psychology, A, could be involved in it, 
or then evaluating based on what topic we're doing, right? We could look at emotion. Um, you know, we could look at personality. Yeah. And even potentially abnormal, Sensation. depending on what's being brought in for how you classify, um, you know, if someone can be tried or not. Right. Um, so, right, so those are examples. Let's go to the, the, the lessons slide. learned going forward. It works. Okay. That's the best thing that you'd say. It works. We're it, it worked for us. It worked for the students and for the content that we both were trying to put across in our classes. And, and you know, I'd almost call it, it works part two, where it says less is more. Yeah. Um, it works primarily for us because, you know, as far as whenever they're always piling new stuff on us, always. Right? you have yeah. new reports to fill out. Um, it's always off of our backs. This did not take didn't long take any time at all to do. Um, literally, a couple just, couple of ten minute conversations. Yeah, and then um, a little bit of planning in our classes anyway. But and, and even setting you know the presentation up right, pretty easy for the sense because we've done it. Um, it was fun. Like if you can see, it's part of why we wanted to do it together in one. Um, hopefully, it seems semi conversational, but right, like it's yeah, kind of the. I haven't done a presentation on Zoom on the same screen as often where, like, you know, I've done, as most of you probably have done, like, group work and things with people, but this feels, even this present, the presentation feels different yeah. to me than other ones. Um, and it works so much that we and other instructors are planning to continue to do more of it. And so I've worked with five of you guys now, five psychology yeah. instructors. And, and so here's the cool. Didn't you pick another? Didn't they pick you out on another topic too? Sociology would, do would, anything yet? Not yet. But okay. They've talked about. Yeah, it. I've heard about. But them. but basically, here's the thing. So I've done all those different ones we listed: the sensation, all that stuff. I have not repeated a single thing in any teacher's class. Right. So even though I'm covering the same content like sensation and perception, I didn't do it exactly the same way. We did something different. It, so there's a lot of content that I can bring in that's not. That I don't even have to repeat it the same way every time. Yeah. So it's fresh for us as well. And it allows autonomy, right? Right. You don't have to do the same thing. I remember um, Carrie, another instructor, psychology instructor, when you did the sensation perception, she sent out a mass email to all of us. Goes, just want to let you know, Den so Dennis is now sending out emails and saying, hey, um, you know, schedule me now. This is getting booked. Yeah. Um, it was a phenomenal experience. I loved it. The students loved it. Um, right. It works. And it doesn't take a whole lot of time off of it. And so, right, we even threw in just to show you what we're planning. Because um, some of you might go, well, I don't have class that's the same time as a challenge. Right now, I don't, for this semester, I don't have class that Dennis has where any of ours overlap. And I've got a, a deaf and dying that I'm doing with Lifespan. And I have an acting for the camera class. And so... We don't need to meet in person. What we're planning on doing is having for my students to prepare their own funeral in a eulogy. And who would be at their funeral and what kind of things would they say? Yep. And then my students, we're going to film from the camera at the perception, as if the camera is inside the coffin, looking up at these people looking down at the, yeah. their lost one. And they're coming in and saying what they, wrote down as right. characters so so we get to act out just like what we would be doing and they're getting to see what their funeral could be like. yeah they're almost getting a uh oh, what is the uh the christmas carol one where they have i forget if that's what's called christmas of ghost of the past ghost of christmas past present, present future, future. Right? they're getting to see that which again we would do an assignment like this anyways but usually it's on paper now they're getting and it's and it's their own words coming yeah. back at them. Yeah, and live feedback from someone else. I can't guarantee it, but I'll almost guarantee it that this lesson or this activity with them, and they they'll get to keep it because it'll be digital. Um, will be one that they won't forget anytime soon. I'm hoping it'll be one they remember for years. Yeah. Um, and again, going to our point of how these little tweaks and additions enhance and kind of make the classroom come alive, which brings us to being a little bit over time but not too bad um if there's any questions or do you have anything else we want to add we'll see what the questions are all right let's take a look oh there's a few in there 
All right, we're going to be reading your questions. Do you want to read the first one or do you want me? I love the idea of the actor having difficulty coming out of their acting acted character. This is a great demo oh, of brain plasticity. Yes, it how is. How the brain can rewire. So I am a psychologist and would love to team with the theater class. By the way, there is a great true story of Leonardo DiCaprio experiencing this when he played Howard Hughes. This okay, is sure this is not unusual. This happens a lot. And the reason why it happens on our end is because they have to live with this character day in and day out for months, if not longer. And so there's a lot of times when it's hard for them, even after their, if it's a film shoot, they finish filming, they on their way home, they're still in character. They can't get out of the character because they have to live with this character for so long during the day. So yeah, that's, it's a great thing. Yeah, and Linda, right, as I'm reading your, your last one there, Joshua, we'll go back to yours in a second. Um, you got, you should start a faculty club where we can meet, discuss and contribute, right? There should be something to this. Cause again, this was so much fun for us. Oh yeah. And, and I guarantee you, anytime I'd see Dennis regularly, I'd be like, okay, it's Dennis. And you know, I need to know stuff outside of him, but like for theater, eh, whatever, right? Yeah. Like that's not going to help my students, but having it go where it says, Hey, and again, we benefit from it. That's that's a really good idea yeah. um, for it, right? And even if the plasticity, right? All of a sudden, I think even the idea with students um, realizing that, yeah, look, this is a multi-billion-dollar industry that we all watch movies or we all see things. What is that like to have to go into different spots, right? So for personality, we'll talk about what does it feel like to go against your theoretical personality right again when we're on that topic for that theory um and then also for right brain plasticity the uh like we like to talk about a lot of when there's trauma the brain um adjusts right and rewires but also when there's healing right it rewires too right um this is just a really cool example for it and then uh josh must teach math yeah i like that because anyone who wants to work with a math class let me know um this you know there's a, a few interesting ones that came up with math too where they even had they had like a social justice math where you can make you look at things based on math concepts to decide the things of like fairness or equitability um like i remember they were talking about radius and you look at a neighborhood for radius right, what's around right. it um you know and again not prescribing anything but bringing questions to examine and now having content around that, like, uh, you know, how many food sources are there? How many parks are there? Which goes into psychologically, sociological, all those kinds of, because you can bring those into any of those things. And um, my wife's a science teacher and, you know, we, we always tease, um, she calls ours since we're in the humanities, she says we're the soft sciences and she's the hard sciences. And I go, you know, all that great stuff with uh, coming up with air conditioning is wonderful. And the science behind it, I go, but without the marketing and without the- uh, Artistic side to design it. Yeah, and get it in, we wouldn't be able to enjoy it. And so somehow trying to find ways to realize we all know this content's connected the more we can do it with our students, the better their learning outcomes. But, you know, at the end of the day, for us, it's just fun. Like, I, we talk all the time now. And yeah. we were even just, uh, you know, talking with colleagues outside. It just kind of attracts people because it's something we're all passionate about. And it's very low stakes for uh, doing because you could get away with it an hour or less. Um, oh yeah. You know, just saying, let's try this mini activity. Cause really all you're doing is taking what the, what Matt teaches in psychology. He's already doing it. He's yep. already covering this material. I'm already covering these acting scenes and monologues and character analysis and doing this in my classes anyway. It's just blending them together. Yeah. It, it, and it works really well. It's fun. Um, it is fun. And again, doesn't take a lot of time. It's almost too easy. Um, so much so, like I said, that my one worry with it from my selfish end is that my source is now being used a lot. And now all of a sudden, it's like, you know, like you have a favorite restaurant and you can go in and 
there's not a lot of people and now all of a sudden there's a wait and they're booked. That's how much this is built. And we we haven't really even advertised. We it. haven't really. Matter of fact, this is our first big advertisement of it. Um, it's just been word of mouth with others. But it's okay for Matt's sake. There are two of theater instructors. Here, so I'm going to have to start yeah, making yeah. friends with the other ones. No, somebody else is going to have to get them. Okay, is it, yeah. Right. And again, right. I don't even know who I know of them, but I haven't had as many conversations. But now whenever we talk, we're like, oh, what are you teaching? And even if we don't use it, the brainstorming just comes naturally and they become like water cooler conversations. Right. Um, you know, that we have the free time anyways. Didn't feel like putting any extra work in at all. It wasn't, it wasn't any, like I said, it's, it's already stuff we're doing. Yeah. Um, and I love that idea. I mean, I think that's just a phenomenal idea from uh, Linda as far as like actually making, because again, making it where we do this interdisciplinary, but without having to do a whole bunch of extra work. Cause... So one of the things our Dean and I have talked about, and we haven't been able to implement yet because of different things, but one of the things is doing some, when we have our division meetings or our, what we call convening, which is trainings where all of us are together, is having some um, icebreaker activities at the beginning. Yeah. That would be something along those lines. You're gonna see me taking a picture of it, by the way. Um, so you win as far as an idea, because we do spend time together as groups, we do. but we don't actually, but we don't interact together and we don't talk about content yeah. together. Um, and I'm a big fan of learning communities. You probably have them at your institutions a lot, but I'm not a big fan of how much of a work commitment it is. And the fact that they have to be the student, same students Yeah. here, we get two different classes coming together. So it's not just one set of students. It's two different ones that normally may not ever be in a class together or they didn't know they were in classes right. together. Right, like maybe I would pair with math and we've got a couple of things that would go. We don't need to do a whole semester. Right. We're good with a one and done. We can be like a, a one hit wonder that was great. And then if you want, we don't have to be exclusive, right? Like you could go then talk to someone in biology um, or vice versa. So it's really based on how well it works for you and your personalities as instructors and keep going now, with see it there's there's one so if anybody teaches biology that would be one because you get with the visual art students who can draw yeah and so if you're looking through a microscope they can draw what they're seeing and again for them that's part of the exercise is look here draw over here and then it would just benefit everybody in the class i saw one i'll give this as my last idea and we'll leave for any other questions or comments but uh they did it with biology and uh, culinary, we have a culinary department. And so they're looking at the health facts of nutrition and the preparation of that. Um, again, that could be a whole course combined, or you do it for a few topics that when each group is covering something, um, yeah. It, and again, you can imagine how much that brings it alive for the students. And of course, culinary and math would work well together because you got a proportions oh, yeah. and formulas. And you get food. Okay. Oh, we're not at the Q&A yet. We, oh, just, I guess we, we already We did. started ahead of them. Ha! We went ahead for the Q&A. Our bad. Um, Matt rushed me. Yeah. Blame me. Yeah. Well, let's rewind it. Look it up. But I think we've covered that. Is there any other Q&A? I suppose we should have marked those in. We can always go back to the things. Sorry, Kate. We're, this is what happens when you've got two people. I blame... That's great. No, it was great. Um, great facilitating. Um, if there are any additional questions, we do. I'll ask once more if anybody does want to have time for a quick question, because um, we are wrapping up the time here. But um, thank you so much for the valuable information. This was just really neat, um, neat to hear. Um, so this, let's see. I don't see any other questions coming through, but thank you again so much. That's because it was covered so well. Yes, that's what <laughs> it was. <laughs> and it looks like we are out of time. So okay. thank you both for all the valuable information that you shared with us today. And this concludes the final concurrent session of the day and our conference. Mm. On behalf of everyone at Hawks Learning, thank you to our presenters and attendees for sharing in IES 2023. Recordings of this year's session will be provided in the coming days. If you haven't already, don't forget to swing by the exhibit hall to say hello to the Hawks team. While there, you can view a
quick five minute demonstration, request your t-shirt and be entered to win a $50 hourly giveaway. Also in the spirit of St. Patrick's Day, you'll find a few golden coins throughout the conference website. Click on the coins to be entered to win an additional raffle. The booth will remain open until 5 p.m. So please join us there. And thank you again for joining us for IES 2023. Thank, thank you. you.